Hi, everybody. I'm Priya, and today I want to share with you my story on how I started Changeify and why I believe that crowd-powered neighborhoods can create resilient cities. So a bit about me, like Stefan mentioned, I was leading a team of designers. I'm an interaction designer. I enjoy designing habits and behaviors through products and services which can have a social impact. And I was leading the design for Nokia Asha, which is basically a phone for ordinary people in the streets, in urban cities, in emerging markets, studying people in different markets, understanding their habits and behaviors. And I noticed something quite interesting. You know, wherever I went, I saw lots of communities who were facing a lot of adversity, but were really resilient. And by resilience, I mean it's about bouncing back. When you face a problem, whether it's economic or social, how do you bounce back and become stronger? And this was very inspiring, because when I came back in my own street, I would see situations like this, the payday loans outside my house. Or also, what's really interesting is not just about local. The fastest growing startup in the UK is Wonga, which gives these instant loans to people. And this got me thinking about how, no matter whether, where you are globally, whether you're in India, Brazil, in Kenya, or also in my own neighborhood, these issues affect on a global and local level simultaneously. And this also kind of, you know, another incident was when I was in Istanbul, and within three days of being there, there was this event at the Taksim Square. And this also got me thinking a lot about how people and citizens can actually change their neighborhood or have a dialogue with the government and why that's not working out. But what's interesting is, again, I'm giving you examples from my neighborhood. It's down my street, Oval Market. You have the farmer's market. You have a lot of people coming and spending time. And it's very interesting how people like to support the local economy. And this is something that my friends down the street in Brixton have been prototyping is the Brixton Pound on how to keep this local value within the neighborhood for local exchange systems. So the reason I gave you all these examples is what I'm telling you is not new. Victor Papanek, in 1970s, spoke about this, on how do we design for the real world. And there are a lot of issues in our real world currently. So we are here today in this wonderful building. And I was earlier this year part of Hubrom, and I was checking out where I could find a place in Berlin because I had a stint in the accelerator, and I went to Airbnb. And it was really interesting how different neighborhoods in Berlin get packaged in terms of experiences and sold to you as well. And this really got me thinking about the city and how, how we actually experience a place. Because, you know, Christopher Alexander, who's written this book about pattern language, really unpacks that all the things that you see in a city, it happens in different levels. So you have your pipes, you're sitting in this room, there's pipes, there's electricity. On top of that, which is the infrastructure level, on top of that, you have the flows, the traffic, the people, all those things. And on top of that, we as people are interacting live. And this is very similar to what I was doing before in a mobile operating system. So if you think about a mobile operating system, it's similar. You have the hardware, the infrastructure level, and that is powering basically the software, which is the middle mid layer, on top of which you have the interaction or the mental model where people interact with the phone and have these various experiences. And all of this stuff has to work together to create a great user experience. And we already use a set of patterns to solve some of the common tasks that people face on their phone. So what happened is, this makes me think about the city as an operating system. And this is my personal story on how I started Changeify. I'm an avid cyclist. I was cycling in London. And this is my street. I had an accident with a pothole. And you know, I tried to file a bug on the city operating system. So what I did is, I wrote to the council. I used Fix My Street, and it took forever. I also told my counselor, you know, I'm not just a complaining person. I have brains. I can come together with other cyclists. I can put a geo map of what are the really potential bad potholes and do something. So you don't have to just treat this as yet another report. But nothing happened. I got frustrated. And basically, what I did was, I went on to Facebook, shared it with my friends, and um, they gave me a lot of support. But what I'm trying to come down to is, when I got support on social media, it got me thinking about smart citizens and smart cities. Because I suspect I'm reasonably smart. We are all reasonably smart people. We all live in a city. And we've been now seeing a lot of trends 
for the Smart Citizen Toolkits. This is from Kickstarter. Acrobatics has created this toolkit where basically you can measure the environment. And I was thinking, this is great. We are really on the cusp of a new kind of revolution. But nobody's asking me as a citizen how I can change or how I can contribute using my brains and intelligence as a human to really influence what's going around me. And I think we have so much of technology available, but there is no currently any technology or platform which brings people together, ordinary people, not geeks, just people like ordinary people to come together and make a difference by using their brains and figuring out how to solve local issues. And the stuff I'm also sharing is, again, it's been there for centuries. So this is the example. So the Great Wall of China is the first example of a crowd-powered public um, uh, building. It was actually the, the Chinese dynasty had put this lottery system where the public had to buy lotteries and they actually funded this. And I love this story because it's wonderful that this was happening already in, in before Christ. And if you think about it, the lottery system itself is a crowd-powered system. This is in England. We've had English lotteries for helping finance better cities when the kings themselves didn't have money. And um, I was thinking, how can we harness some of these things which have been happening for centuries and bring it back to here in the real world where we are? So this is where I'm going to share with you how we started Changeify. So Changeify is a crowd-powered platform to create better neighborhoods. And I want to talk about the story of John. It's modeled on a lot of personal anecdotes. So think about John. He's just like you or me, and you know, he's a cyclist. But in this case, he has two issues. He can't find bike parking stands in his neighborhood, as well as there's this problem of the constant dog litter, which I also found out when I was living in Berlin was similar to what was happening in London. So you have a common pattern there. And um, he comes across Changeify when he's walking down the street, and he sees this on one of the local shops. He's intrigued. He scans it and then decides to take, you know, go and give it a shot. I mean, he does that. Luckily, there's a dog walking in front of him, does its business, and he's really pissed off, takes a photo, adds a comment, saying he wants to do something about this. But when he does this, in the feed, somebody else puts another photo saying, hey, we tried this in our neighborhood. Do you want to give this a shot? And this is how we want to try to do. It's like, how can you get people to come together and crowd-solve these kind of common problems? Because other people in other neighborhoods might have solved some of this stuff. So he's enthused. He goes forward. He starts taking photos of the actual bike parking issue outside his house. So again, we are building on the habits of behavior of people who like, you know, Instagram addicts. You love to take photos. Social change should be fun. It should be cool. We want to use filters. We want to make the experience really interesting. So he takes a photo here, shares it, goes on to Facebook, where his neighbor, Tejal, sees it, likes it, and it spreads like wildfire across the neighborhood because everybody's facing the similar issue, but nobody's articulated that. He starts getting a lot of support. And when he does that, basically, it starts trending on Changeify. And on the other part of town, you also have what we've done is you have the local businesses and brands as well. So over here, Sally, who's the marketing manager at Starbucks, who also has a feed, she's checking the feed on Changeify, or Evergo, who's actually our local coffee shop owner in Camberwell, is also checking the feed. And what we're doing here is we're trying to get the businesses together to see how they can back some of these issues. So people like Starbucks, they have a real issue with the loss of trust that they want to regain at a grassroots level. So they're interested in how they can create better connections with people on a hyper-local level. Evergo, who's a local business owner, he's relying on local footfall to come to his coffee shop. He too wants to support community projects that are coming out in this neighborhood. So they back John's project, and when they back John's project, Councillor David, who's on the other side of town, who's also on Changeify, gets a notification saying, hey, a project that you've been following has been backed. So Councillor David's budgets have been cut. We know everywhere council budgets have been cut. And he's looking for support from local businesses and other businesses to see how they can come together to help him get through some of the things he's facing as well. So what the system does is it basically brings people together. So in this case, more and more people start coming and helping John. John's a designer. He wants to design these recycled bike stands. He gets support from other people who can give their, lend their workshop, lend their time. And when they start doing the work, they basically start earning points on the system by taking photos and putting it up there. Because these projects can take a while, and people can lose attention. So we want to create a story on how we go about it. So he earns the points, and say six months later, after he's managed to negotiate and figure this out, he's kind of become like you know, a local hero in the neighborhood. And he's done this not by himself, 
but through the help of the crowd, through people coming together and supporting him. On the other side, he's also earned these points. And should he choose, he can go into any of the local participating shops, use these points. At the same time, the shops and the brands get back that kind of brand trust by saying that they're supporting these projects. So it's a win-win way for getting the local business and the local residents together to make this change. So the way the system is actually working based on Christopher Alexander's patterns is to really take some of these common problems you see in the neighborhood and create a pattern language. So we are basically looking at problems and solutions, and that's where we are talking about crowdsourcing, crowdsolving, and crowdfunding. And the way we are looking at this is really kind of having a subscription model for businesses and for councils. So how do we do this currently? Where am I today? So this is, a, this is how the vision is. How am I actually prototyping this? So what we're doing currently is basically running these kind of neighborhood events, change of events. We've done it in several neighborhoods in London. We've also done it in Barcelona as well, hoping to bring it to Berlin. We go on a walk in the neighborhood. We basically then spot and share things. We get people to take photos, share it on Changeify, and then basically also have a face-to-face -face engagement at the local farmer's market where we get people to basically crowdsource issues both offline and online. And then basically we have these different maps which bring people together and the issues. And we start seeing in these maps people come together either in a physical space or in the online space to start seeing how they could create a project to solve some of these issues. But this has to be fun. This shouldn't feel like work. I'm very conscious of that. So it created different tools in our community engagement toolkit to see how people could create things like this. So we had a Changeify Elephant Castle event where we created these little postcards from the future where people could take, take this toolkit and basically create a kind of a small uh, a play where they can say what the idea is. So when you go back, you can put this on your mantelpiece and have a conversation with your neighbors. So. One of the things we're really keen to do, like I said, is to find a way that we can work with the local businesses. And this is, again, an example of when you come up with a project, you can create a video, put it on Changeify, show it to the local businesses, and get them to support you to become the first backer. And we're also prototyping a neighborhood loyalty scheme. And this is an example of in a walk where we create this kind of a mobile loyalty, where you go on the walk and you earn points, and you can go back to the participating shop, and they can see whether they have more footfall, and they talk about the shop and the provenance. So to just complete the, the way the system works, so step one, you spot and share that you have something that you want to change in the neighborhood. You take a photo, and you share it. You get support from your friends and your neighbors. Once you get support, you also start getting backing from the local businesses. And once you do that, you start doing the work. You share that work progress. You start earning points. And then basically, the businesses and the brands and the council get a data of what actually has happened since the project's done. So what I'm actually standing here and, and you know, sharing the stories, this is where we are in our journey. Love to bring this to Berlin as well. You are the crowd. You have the power to change your neighborhood. Just like I, I always look at, I'm not a football fan, but I'm always inspired how football has all these locations like Arsenal, Chelsea. Imagine if we could turn our neighborhoods as well with the same kind of fan and loyalty. We could do wonderful change. And you don't have to go, like the previous video, you don't have to go to India, Brazil, or Kenya. You can do this right now in Berlin, outside your house. Thank you. <laughs>